Let's go down to the east. We're just going to go down the left side of the bracket here. Carter, this is your region, my friend. I sent you a voice note. I sent you a text. You put a video out within seconds. My instant thought from seeing this bracket is that it is wide, wide, wide open. I go up and down the list. There isn't a team on this list that I have any interest in picking to a Final Four, but you have to pick one. And your team with a coach who's made eight of them suddenly sits in a spot that I think is really, really opportunistic for the Michigan State Spartans. Do you love the draw in the bottom half of this bracket? Oh, I absolutely love love the draw for my Michigan State Spartans. I mean, starting with that first game, uh, G, you know I mentioned earlier this year that USC was a team that actually would kind of scare me in March because of Boogie Ellis kind of having like a nuclear March guard run. But that kind of goes out the window with Drew Peterson's injury. He's got a back injury. It's obviously nagging him. He's playing through it. But they're not the same team without him. Um, And I just don't really believe in this USC team at this point. Uh, They didn't play that well in the Pac-12 tournament, uh, losing to Arizona State in a game. They had plenty of chances to win. Uh, Arizona State actually tried to give them the game numerous times, and they just didn't want to take it. So I, I really think that I like that matchup for Michigan State in the first game. And then the second game, if we're talking about two seeds that I would want Michigan State to match up with out of all the two seeds, Marquette is the one I think that scares me the least as a matchup for Michigan State. They don't have a necessarily dominant front court, which is what really kills Michigan State because of our center production. Uh, and, you know, Tyler Kolick, big, big East player of the year, really good player. But I mean, he's more of an undersized guard. Uh, we don't really struggle with those. So I like the matchup for that. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Shaka Smart wears long sleeves under his polos. That cannot be forgotten. Anyone that goes to the Rob Douster school of style. Uh, yeah, they, they can't be trusted. That is extremely true. I also want to point out just quickly that Drew Peterson has the actual back injury that Matthew Meyer pretends he has twice a game. Uh, And I think that is really hampering USC right now. Sweeney, what do you make of this region? Yeah. I mean, I, I, as much as I struggle to, to pick a, a coach with Doster drip to the final four, like I, I think Marquette, I think Marquette has become so undervalued nationally. Like we roll into the big East tournament They've, they're the number one seed. They go 17 and three in the league, win the thing by two games. And what does everyone do? Yeah, UConn's going to roll through this thing. UConn, UConn, you look how great UConn is. Oh my gosh, Tristan Newton. Oh my gosh, Adama Sanoga. Oh my gosh, Donovan Klingon. UConn is going to take over the world. Okay, well, Marquette just beat them on a neutral court. Um, that's basically a home game for, for UConn. UConn dominates Madison Square Garden. Marquette wins the game. All right, they, they, they didn't turn around while they're playing Xavier. Xavier's got Sule Boom. They got Colby Jones. They got these dynamic guards. It's going to be really hard to beat. Marquette ran them out the gym. Like, Mar- Marquette has lost once since January 15th. They're, they've won 14 of the last 15. They have one of the best point guards in the country. Their starting five is incredibly cohesive. And they're a nightmare to prepare for because of the passing of Igadero and, and Kolek's ability to operate in ball screens. Like, at some point, like we got to give this team its flowers. And I was hesitant because I didn't necessarily know if I bought the talent level. And I didn't know if I bought how they'd be away from home. Like I, I thought I'd go up to Marquette games. I live in Chicago, um, go up to Milwaukee and say, wow, this team looks incredible. But Marquette is a great home court. Is it going to really carry over? And it just, it just has. Like to me, they're one of the most complete teams in the country. And, and they belong in the legit Final Four conversation. Um, so, yeah, I, I – is it hard to bet against Izzo? Yeah, of course it is. But like, it, it does it does annoy me. Watch sitting sitting up here and like watching every X. This is not you on you, Carter, right? This is everyone. Like, it, as soon as this bracket came out, everyone was like sprinting to tweet about how great Tom Izzo is and sprinting to tweet about how great Michigan State is and how they're going to roll through. Like, Michigan State looked terrible like three days ago. Like, Michigan State was awful against Ohio State. All right, Sweeney. <laughs> And, and and so wrap wrap it up, damn it! <laughs> All I'm saying is the fact that like everyone is ready to anoint Michigan State on an Elite Eight run when Marquette. All they've done for the last month and a half is roll through really good opponents. That that to me that to me is crazy. Like I, I think this team is really really good. So Marquette uh, is seven and three against the Big East tournament teams that or the Big East teams that made the NCAA tournament, right? So against the upper echelon of a lot of teams I really like, like you said, Sweeney, a lot of people want to pick UConn. I had just 
talked up Creighton. I really like them. We're going to talk about Xavier later in the show. Uh, I, if you put any of those teams in Marquette's draw, I think I'm picking them to the final four without much hesitation. I don't know what it is about this Marquette team that I can't get over the hump with, sweetie. I can't get there, though. Well, like, uh, why, are, why also are we forgetting that we got to take into fact that there's always a team that tricks you with a really good tournament run and they win their conference tournament and they let you down kind of, they don't make it to a sweet 16. Like that does happen. Yeah. I'm but they saying. were crushing it before. Like, let's not like, like I know, yeah, I know. And, 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 I, and I don't want to disrespect Marquette too much. I really think they are a good team. I'm just saying that out of the two seeds, if I'm Michigan state, if I want to play a two seed, I want to play Marquette. I don't want to play Texas. I don't so want to play I, the other two seeds. I am going to disrespect them. And then we'll move on from Marquette. This is the final thing I'm going to say. The, the three of us were just, at the United Center watching the Big Ten tournament, right? Correct? Nod for me. That happened. I'm not dreaming this. We all would agree that was a pretty ugly conference tournament. It was gross. There was not great basketball being played. We nod. We agree on that for the most yes. part. Pretty gross. Marquette's 0-2 against Big Ten teams. That's it. They lost to Wisconsin at home this season. Like, okay, they also played Purdue to five points at Mackey when Purdue was the wagon of all wagons. I'm out. It's Wisconsin at home, Sweeney. I'm not dealing with this. Uh, I just can't get there. Let's move on to the other teams in this region because the juiciest first round matchup to me is Duke and Oral Roberts. I think the committee was salivating when they saw that. I, I do think there's a world where Duke makes a final four. I think there's a world where Duke wins a national championship this year. I also think Oral Roberts is legit awesome. Like, I don't think this is some uh, Cinderella story again. Like, I think this is probably far and away my favorite lower level team like i mean florida atlantic's really good too but uh, give me the team with max Asmus and a seven foot four center that can shoot threes i like this they're better than the group that made the run a couple years ago who do you like in that matchup sweeney yeah i mean I'm, i think i'm gonna pick duke just because i think duke's playing so well and I, I was ready to pick oral roberts against anyone uh it's gonna be hard for me to pick against duke in, in this setting because i just think I think they've really raised their game. Now, now that being said, like I, I do think there's some stuff that Oral Roberts can do, particularly offensively, that will cause a lot of problems, right? Um, like the number of pick and pops that they play to pull Lively away from the basket or take him out of the game altogether. I, I think that's a matchup that Oral Roberts can really exploit. And Connor Vanover is going to have to make those shots. He's, you know, 33% on the year from three. Not good, not great. Um you know, they also, you know, when they were really good in that conference championship game, other guys were also hitting pick and pop threes like Patrick and Wombo's, you know, statistically a solid, but not elite shooter Same with DJ Weaver. Like they, they're going to need to be, to, to beat this Duke team. They're going to need some special shooting nights from their big guys and, and keep forcing Duke to respect those guys pulling away from the rim. But I think that matchup something that Oral Roberts can exploit. And I think the other thing that they can do is, I think Vanover can protect the rim and slow down some of those Jeremy Roach drives, right? Like Roach getting to the rim is, is Duke's best offense. A lot of the time, like they're, they're not a team that's running like crazy sets. Like they're just going to, we're just going to break out the bounce, get to the rim and either dish it or, or score it. And I, and I think having a drop coverage big like Vanover who can swat everything he's top 10 in the country and block rate is, is really impactful. So, I mean, this is going to be an awesome game. It's gonna be, I think prime time, like everyone's going to want to watch this thing. Um, everyone's either going to be saying that Duke's winning the championship or they're going to lose to all Roberts. I don't know if the truth is quite there, but like, like this is going to be like a three or a four point spread, which is like going to be so sick. Like the fact <laughs> that like Oral Roberts Duke is like a, is, is going to be like four and a half by the time it gets bet up by the Duke fans. Like that, like that's, that's incredible. Yeah. I feel like that's one that cart and I are going to responsibly bet way too much money on. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it actually, it, it really pains me because going into this tournament, like I was so hyped for, to pick Oral Roberts. Like I, I, I didn't know who the exact matchup was going to be, but I was so excited to pick them. I love A. Smith. I love Van over the tall, you know, just the guy was just transformed coming from Ar come from Arkansas when he didn't really look like he couldn't play. And now he, I've seen him mentioned even on draft discussions in some circles, which is crazy, but it is crazy. Uh, I, I, I just I can't I can't I can't pick against this Duke team with how they're playing. I mean, credit to John Shire, like, you know, really riding the ship with them, getting all those freshmen who we were so down on to start the year. I mean, Tyrese Proctor is playing better. Derek Whitehead, uh, Derek Lively is playing better. And I think that matchup wise, like Lively will be able to play in the perimeter and the pick and rolls with Acemas. And I think that it'll kind of negate the, you know, basically the effectiveness of that. 
So as much as I want to pick Oral Roberts in this game, I'm going to have to go with Duke, but I do think it'll be close. I was on the fence about it until Derek Whitehead was the second name you listed for Duke, and now I'm out. I'm I'm in on Oral Roberts. He's been he's been playing well lately. He's had one game over 20 minutes since February, since Valentine's Day. Like, what are we doing? Uh, he's playing well. He, what, what, he needs all right. He, he needs massive minutes to play well. He had two points in 15 minutes last game. He has one game in his last six. That's gone. They were, no, they, what, they, what, were, what, they were they were allowed to they were allowed two points and the and the one. game is and the game is played on both ends of the floor. Gregory, one give game in his last minus. seven. One give game me, in his me, last seven. Inject Derek Whitehead plus minus into my veins, please. I I will not be injecting Derek Whitehead into any part of you, but I will be asking for Oral. Give me Oral. I want Oral hey, Oral Roberts hey, in this game. Uh, <laughs> hey, by the way, YouTube chat, if you're watching this, if you're watching me go off the hinges at this point, uh, get us to 1,000 likes because Carter Elliott just texted me and said, if we get to 1,000 likes before the end of this show in roughly 32 minutes, he will go shotgun a beverage before he goes to bed tonight. 1,000 likes, that's what we need. We're not there yet. We get to it. And, 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 and Greg, we're added to that. So we'll do the Carter shotgun and two Top Golf giveaways uh, if we hit a thousand likes. So and two Top Golf giveaways. We love Top Golf. Uh, we love Oral and we love Top Golf. It's great. Let's move on. Um, so I I have a team in this region that I'm going to pick to win this region that we haven't said a word about. Any anybody want to guess who that team is? Kentucky. Not Kentucky. I thought Kansas State. Oh. It's Kansas State cart. Talk me off the ledge, please, before I just blow up my entire bracket on the Wildcats, who have been my favorite team to bet on all season long. But I promised myself I wouldn't fall for the trap. And because of this, it's not my fault. It's the region's fault. Who am I supposed to pick in this horrible region? I mean, I I just don't know. I don't, I don't know. Marquise Noel has been scaring me lately. Like, he, he makes me fall in love. He makes me pull out my hair. It's just too much back and forth to me. Uh, I don't know if – I mean – with with a lot of these Big Twelve teams, though, the the thing is that you got to take into you know kind of consideration. I mean, I guess this is across the country, but mainly with the Big Twelve because of how strong it was. Like these teams really need a switch up, like of not playing each other and not beating up on each other. That's why, like when we talked about Baylor, I wasn't completely out because I think a change of scenery might do them some good. I feel the same about this Kansas State team. I love Keontae Johnson. I think he is an All-American talent. Uh, you know, I've, I've gone back and forth with a couple people about how he might be, you know, the best small forward in the Big 12 over the likes of a guy like Jalen Wilson, just talking talent-wise. But uh, I will not go – I will not sell my Kansas State stock because – of Noel and because of Keontae Johnson. And I love like the other guys on their team, like Tomlin as well. I mean, they got guys. I like Desi Silsu. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad at you for picking that Kansas state team because they got the talent. And like you said, someone's got to come out of this. <laughs> someone's got to come out of this bracket. You can't just leave a avoided, uh, avoided final four, but I guess we're just selling on Purdue. Greg, is that, is that what you're working up to? Uh, well, I, yeah, it's crazy. We haven't mentioned Purdue, but I I'm out on Purdue, man. I just am like I I'm glad they did what I said they should have done. If they are the quote unquote elite team that we've kind of praised them as all year, they needed to run through the Big Ten. I don't really think they even did that in the regular season. Like every other team lost nine games so they could win it going away with five losses and really playing pretty poorly down the stretch of the season. Uh, they did run through the Big Ten in the Big Ten tournament. But guys, they played. Rutgers, Ohio State, and Penn State to win that title. Like, they have not even faced a team with a pulse since two weeks ago. So, I don't know. I uh, I, I genuinely think their draw is really tough. Like, Kendrick Davis and a team that forces a bunch of turnovers is a pretty bad matchup for Purdue's guards right now. Um, and we know how great Memphis is playing. Like, for them to go do what they just did against a Marcus Astorless Houston team – I'm in on Memphis right now, so I do. I have Purdue losing in the round of 32 card. That's my answer. Sweeney, what are you? Uh, where do you have the Boilermakers in this one? Yeah, I, I also am going down to Memphis. I, I will say, like, the Memphis Florida Atlantic game is not a walkover. Yeah, like, like FAU is is very legit. They have four outstanding guards, and I think you know you said, oh wow, you know, like the pressure and Memphis ability to force turnovers. Like that's not really going to work against FAU. Like they're going to take care of the ball. They're going to make plays. And, and and they're really confident and know how to win. I do think Memphis wins that game because I think Memphis is playing really well right now. But I, I think 
I think people have just been like, yeah, well, they, they, there's no chance that Memphis loses in the first round. Like, no, no, FAU's won 31 games for a reason. Um, that being said, like, I, 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 I echo all of your thoughts, Greg, on the matchup there um, for, for Purdue, um, a team that's going to press them, a team that's going to send athletes at them, a team that has some interior size to handle, not, not to handle Edie, but not to be completely overwhelmed, right? Like you turn on Ohio State, Purdue, you turn on Penn State, Purdue, and you're like, who are these guys trying to guard Zach Eady, right? Like, I'm sorry, Eugene Brown, but like, you're not a center. You'll never be a center. You will never be able to guard Zach Eady. That being said, like, I I kind of think that Dandridge can hang a little bit. Dandridge is old. He's experienced. He's very, very talented. Um, he's not, a, you know, not going not to be a guy who scores it a ton, but he can be active. And I think, uh, you know, Chandler Lawson had an amazing game in the first half uh, for, for, for Memphis today. He was all over the place. So they've got kind of, kind of some of the athletes that they can send at people. And I think that's, that's valuable uh, in, in a game against Purdue. So I, I think that matchup's tough. I don't want to write off Purdue, right? Like at the end of the day, they've, they've got the best player in the country. He's dominant. Um, they've got a really good coach, right? We can question Painter's tournament record, but he is really, really good. And he is, very difficult to prepare for. Uh, I, I think Gottlieb made this point on one of the one of the hours of this thing. Like playing Purdue on a on a one day turn is is really hard, uh, and I think that will be a challenge for Memphis. But I, I just think like I know Purdue already played Duke, but I think it, it's almost un, not comparable to, to mention that game at PK eighty five just because of how different a place Duke is in right now. So even if I think Purdue survives that Memphis game. You might have to get Duke. You might have to get Tennessee, um, two really, really talented athletic teams. And then, you know, potentially in, in an Elite Eight game, you got to get through a Kentucky, a Kansas State, or or Marquette, who I've obviously been been big on. So um, the draw is not easy for Purdue. I'd be surprised if they get to the Final Four. To me, they're the most vulnerable number one seed. 